Good morning, I'm Cody Henriksen, and today we're going to be taking a look at Java and how we can work with some class design. So let's look at a quick little overview of what we're going to be covering. So when we're talking about class design, the first things we're looking at are some data member information, talking about the default constructors, how we can do overloaded constructors, and I've got overloaded boxed in because it's a vocab board, definitely something to follow up on later on. And finally, we'll be looking at how we can do with getters and setters. So that's what we're going to be going as our overview for the day. Let's go ahead and take a look at how a Java file itself is set up. When we're talking about a Java file, um, the Java file always starts out the first line is the package statement. It's going to be explaining what that file is, where it's located inside the project, and it's going to be in the lowercase with this dot whatever, followed by a semicolon because it ends up where it's at. So package whatever we're going. The second section we have in a class file is our import statements. When we're talking the import sections, this is how we can actually use Java to talk to other files. Java can only see what's inside the package where that file itself resides. So if we want to talk to anything that's in another package, like say, for example, a scanner or a controller or anything else that we're looking at, we have to use an import statement to make that happen. As you can see right here, I have the parens around the S. So when I'm talking about that, we can say you have anywhere from 0 to N uh, import statements inside our project. Then we have our class header. Now, of course, you know, I love my vertical squiggles. That's just the way I love my stuff. And in our class header, the order itself is not actually required by Java, but I have my style guide, and that's what we're working for when we're talking about this. The first thing we're going to have is our declaration section. And when we're talking about our declaration section, these are the data members, the things that describe or make up the object itself. This can be anywhere from primitives to objects as well, a list, arrays, etc. The data member section, however, is always, always, always private, because when you're talking about the data members, those belong to the object itself, and only the object gets to make those decisions about that. The next section we have is our constructor section. Now again, we have the parens S on that because when we're talking about constructors, we can have anywhere from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 18 constructors. Usually we'll see around 0 to 2. 1 or 2 is where we most often have that happen. And the constructors, of course, have the same name as the class and same thing as the file. One more thing about our constructor section before we move on. Constructors will 99.9 .9 billion percent of the time, I know 9 billion percent is not really a thing, but 99.9 .9 billion percent of the time will always be public. Private constructors don't often have a lot of use when we're working with Java projects. We usually have a subclass on that. A private class only exists for specific design considerations. The next section we have is our methods section. In the methods section, we'll have a mixture of both public and private methods. Public methods are methods that can be called externally by something outside of the instance of the object. However, private methods are things that are done internally, something controlled by the object itself. And so you want to take a look at the idea on that, that some things can only be done internally, other things can be done and called externally. And so when you're talking about your design itself, that's where that comes into play. So when we're talking about class design, we want to go over it and specifically look at the declaration section. So let's go over here and take a look at that. When we're talking about the declaration section, we're talking about the data members that make up our object. So in the case of a debug duck, we're talking about things that describe the duck itself. So when we have a Boolean data type, we could have a is listening, is our duck listening to us, or does it have the answer, so has answer. When we're talking about a Boolean data type, one of the things I use with my data members specifically is I use the is or has prefix for my... <clears throat> I use the is or the has prefix for my variable name because when I simply look at that variable, I can see immediately it's going to give me either a yes or no answer, which has a direct correlation to true or false, which makes it really easy when I'm actually reading the, the code itself or I'm looking at the code or the structure of it, I can immediately see how to process that code and visually or mentally keep track of what's inside that code for itself so I know what I'm uh, tracking. When we're talking about an int data member, on the other hand, we're looking at, like, say, questions answered. So we're looking at something that's going to identify the fact that it's keeping track of a count, so a whole number on that. And so even though it doesn't actually say count on there, the fact that it says questions answered, oh, there's a plural possibly on that. It has a number that sounds like it's something that might be an answer for that. So again, I use words that reflect the structure we're working with, what it is and what it does, or what it is and what it can hold. We do the same thing here on double, percent correct. A percentage is always a double value because it's a decimal value. So that would be a double value to use to store that. Easy way to keep track of it. Now, when we're talking about a string, the object data type right here, I have color and name. Now, in color, if we're actually doing some Java development, we'd want to use a color object, but we're simply doing some really uh, quick basic stuff. The color would be a string, same with the name. And those would describe what they are, and it stores exactly what we're looking at inside that. So when we're talking about working with a debug doc, we can get that information immediately available. So now that we've got our cons data members that we've talked about, and we know what kind of uh, now that we've got our data members talked about, we know what kind of data type it is, and the names for all of them. We have them all listed out. The next thing we have is we'd want to put them inside our declaration section. And so for each data type that we have, we put them in the declaration section. I like to list them all out one at a time, so it's private boolean is listening, semicolon. Private boolean has answer, semicolon. Private int questions answered, semicolon. And so when you do the declaration section, each individual variable gets its own line, and it goes visibility, type, name, 
all the way down. Makes it really easy to keep track. You can also group them by types. You can automatically, oh, here's what this type is, here's what this type is, and here's these values. Makes it really easy for you to keep track of it. So that's one of the things I do when I'm doing my actual class design. So let's do a quick demo for that right now. Of course, when we're writing our data members or our declaration section, we're always using all lowercase for the keywords like double, int, boolean, and our visibilities like public and private. Henriksen's uh, handwriting, that's not so hot. So I do use, a, obviously, clearly using the small caps notation right here, so just to keep that in mind. But visibility, when we write it out in our declaration section, it just always be private. We then have the type of it, and we'll do this case, do boolean. And then the name is listening. And so when we're talking about our data member section, every single data member gets the name like this. So it has its visibility, followed by the data type, then its name, and then a semicolon. I do that for all the data members that belong inside my class. It makes it really easy to keep track of it. Now, the order of the data members in the declaration section does not matter. It doesn't matter how we order them. I like to do them as just by type organized, like, oh, there's these ones and these ones and these ones. But you don't have to have an organization structure for it. I do it so it makes it sense. It makes it really easy to keep track of. But you can do it on your own as well. Again, when we're talking about the structure of the Java class file, all of these pieces right here, the declaration section, the constructors, and the methods, they're not required to have any order specifically by Java, the compiler, or Java the language itself. But our style guide that we use here in class will always be declaration section first, and they're always private. The constructors, they're going to be public all the time because it makes more sense. And then finally, followed by our methods, which is going to be a mix of both public and private structures.